My name is Winnie Atieno Okar. I'm currently the head coach at AlphaFit, one of the biggest gym in Nairobi. And then the other thing is that I'm probably the strongest mom right now. Yes, I'm currently a new mom. My daughter is nine months old and I was the fittest, but not anymore, maybe the fittest mom. I'm a fitness addict. I love, love fitness. I eat, dream and just wake up and think of fitness. I was also a former national weightlifting athlete, of which I'm not anymore, but maybe in future I will pursue that. So I was born and raised in Mombasa, of which we lived there for a few years. Then we've been up and down in Kenya. We went to Kisumu, we went to Kitale, then Mombasa, then Nairobi. So I went to school, nursery school was Tasca Primary because my dad used to work at East African Breweries Limited and um, the reason why he got to that was because he used to play volleyball for the team. So that's how I got to like attend Tasca Primary School. And then I went to high school in Naivasha Girls. I was very active in sports. I didn't get to be active in primary because they didn't promote that back then in primary school. So yeah, when I joined Naivasha Girls, I tried all sports and that led me to become the to become the games captain at Naivasha Girls. So that I was all rounded. And I was bet I was actually really good in basketball. You know people don't believe that because they look at me and they see that I've shot. Guys, I was a point guard, the best I think in Rift Valley province. We should look for that newspaper. It was by standard by the way, I think. Yeah. And after that, I attended Kenyatta University, where I did a degree in sports management. So basically, my life has been sports since I was born. It started with my parents. They met in a volleyball tournament. <laughs> I don't know if that's when I was conceived. They should probably tell me that. But yeah, that's how they met. And um, yeah, I think it's their love sport, sport that has led me here. Uh, the other thing, what else? Growing up, I really wanted to do what the boys were doing. So I would hang out with the boys more and not the girls because I wanted to prove a point. Because you know how parents are like, oh, don't do that, that's for the boys. I was like, no, I want to see what this is all about. I was curious. And that's how I was able to do most of the stuff that most men are able to do and they think that women cannot do. So um, I'd mentioned that we were moving from places that was the first one was from Mombasa to Kisumu and that was because there was a transfer because you know EABL was also in Kisumu so that's why we moved to Kisumu and then um, in Kitale we were just exploring I think my parents were explorers of which I'm also an explorer so we're just exploring the town I really loved it and then but we didn't stay there for long it was like for two years then we moved back now I also mentioned that my parents were in sports. They didn't tell me anything about sports, by the way. I just, they were passionate about it. They would watch, we would sit down and watch the Olympics and I'll be like, wow, one day I think I want to be that person in the Kenyan uniform. Of which it happened at the Commonwealth Games in 2018 when I represented Kenya in the Kenya weightlifting competition. Yeah, I was in the team, yeah. Um, how did they inspire me to be in sports? I think they started inspiring me when, uh, when they started seeing results. Yeah, because um, when I was in university and doing the, the, the course, the sports management course, my dad used to wonder what I was doing. Like, why would I go to school to do sports? Why would he pay all the school fees for me to go and swim? You know, he wouldn't understand. But the moment he started seeing me on television, started seeing me traveling the world, representing Kenya, that's when he was like, oh, okay, so this thing can actually do something for you. So Sports in Campus was a bit challenging because I had my hopes high. I thought that going to Kenyatta University, I would immediately join the team because I was really good in high school, so I had hopes. But getting there, it was a little bit hard for me. 
because you know they believe that you have to like take part in sports there for a long period of years before you join the main team. So I gave up. I was like, yeah, this is not going to happen. I'm only here for four years. So I gave up on that. And then I decided to join aerobics. The gym, the gym at the school had aerobics. So I used to go there lunchtime and just have fun and keep active because there's nothing else I could play in school. So I decided to do that, which was okay. So my experience in sports in uni wasn't what I expected. So my lecturer called me to his office and he was like, you know, everyone has been going for interview. I was like, what interview? He's like, guys are interviewing at Rayburn to be GAP students or basically a sports assistant. And I was like, no one in my class told me about it. So he was like, yeah, everyone has tried, but they didn't make it. But now, since you're the last person to go and give it a try, we have hopes in you and hope that you will actually succeed and become a sports assistant, of which I went and Oh, to my shock, they gave me the job and I started working at Rayburn as a sports assistant in 2013. So there I met my mentor. He was actually my boss, he's the one who interviewed me for the job and then he was like, do you think you can try out CrossFit? I was like, yeah, I've got nothing to lose. So we started off by training early in the morning. So I was, I was um, doing my teaching and also training. So early in the morning, like at 6 a.m., we'd go to the gym, train and then continue with teaching. And that's how I got into CrossFit. When I started CrossFit, I started CrossFit as an athlete. Like I really wanted to compete because I was very competitive and I wanted to be the best and also can wear the Kenyan uniform, yeah. So when I got to that and I, he asked me if I wanted to coach and I said, because he was leaving the country. And I was like, yeah, I'm always like, let me tell you, my phrase in life is that there's nothing to lose. So I gave it a try, I was like, okay. And I was like, this is fun, it's more like teaching and you get to transform people's life. So that's how I got into coaching. So the reason why I got into coaching and I still am coaching is the fact that you get to meet all these different type of people in life and they come to you with different motives, different goals, but the bond that you form with them, the friendship that you form with them, the stories that they give you on how just being with them and coaching them has changed their lives is what has kept me going. And I think that's the main purpose in my life to just change people's lives and make them believe in themselves and know that they're capable of all this. They're capable of conquering any challenges that they're going through in life. recently just gave birth. Is it, is it okay to say recently? Nine months ago. And it's been quite an interesting journey, especially being an athlete and then getting pregnant and you have no one in the country to guide you through that journey. It was very scary for me. I had to do my own research so that I could continue with my training even when I was pregnant. Because to me, training is just, it's more than competing. It really helped me mentally in my life to just be in a good space 
and because you know life there's so much going on in life and the things that you need to just keep you going and not give up and training was one of them so with the research that I was able to do it was not enough so I had to do a bit of guesswork here and there so when I gave birth the three months that I was home on maternity leave I said that I really wanted to understand like how to keep training when you're pregnant and also just to help other women because it's just more than maintaining your weight more than just maintaining your training so that's how I got into pregnancy and postpartum I was able to do my course it took me about actually three the three months that I was home to do the course and now I'm able to also help women who go through you know pregnancy it's like trauma so when you go through pregnancy the different things that you get to experience so like prolapse or things like diastasis so now I'm able to guide women through that in their training how to manage it the things you cannot avoid but there, there are ways you can manage it and now after you give birth then what next you want to go back to training that has been your daily routine how do you go about it from point A to point B so now I'm able to like understand how to guide them how they get to recover their pelvic floor and their core and also enjoy training at the same time. So that way I was also able to make connections. I was able to make connections with the pelvic floor therapists, with doctors here and there. So we get to communicate and just share information. When I was pregnant, there's a lot of things that I had to adjust and modify. So like my days, my training days, I used to train twice a day and I'll do it five times a week. But now when I got pregnant, I was able to do that the first trimester. By the second trimester, because you know your energy levels drop. So the second trimester, I had to drop from five times a week to three to four times a week. And then I would train once a day. And I wouldn't train before, it would take me two to three hours. But now I had to reduce it to 45 minutes to 30 to 45 minutes. Yes. And then also, I used to train like um, in the evenings. But you know, when you're pregnant, like when the sun and, it, and then it's so hot outside, it's so hard for you to train. So I'd train in the morning so that I have the all afternoon to sleep. <laughs> and then also, my, for my weight, I had to reduce. So I wasn't, I had to change my mindset. I'm not training as an athlete. I'm training to be able to just recover during postpartum. Yeah, so training while you're pregnant is more than just maintaining your weight. It's, there's more to it. You should be, whenever you're pregnant and you're training, you need to, send, to change your mindset. You need to change your mindset from just regular training to recovery after postpartum. So that's something that I had to work on. And then the other thing that changed was, what else? It was actually just that, the hour, and the intensity. I had to change the intensity. There's some movements that you need to avoid because of putting pressure on the core and the baby. So all the tension, the pressure, that had to, I had to keep to put that in mind. We tend to believe that when we are pregnant, especially me, I'm, I'm very stubborn. When you tell me not to do something, I'll definitely do it. So, but I, and I've, I've seen this with other women as well. So when you get pregnant, you still want to be able to do the things that you're doing before because you're scared of losing them, especially in move strength or some of the movements that you used to do. I want, what I can tell them is, it's okay, you have, years after to do that so right now you can just let it be train just change your training change your mindset so one of the major challenges is when uh, you find people who don't believe that you're good at what you do and that's as a woman as by the way when uh, the main one that i experienced was when men look at you and they're like there's nothing you can tell me to do that you think i can't do and they don't want to listen to you so i had to prove to them 
that I'm stronger than them, that I know what I'm doing, and they need me so that I can show them the way. <laughs> What I can tell most of the women who want to start fitness, whether postpartum or if you're just someone who's maybe watched the videos on YouTube or Instagram and want to start fitness, is that just that. Find someone who can guide you through it, who can show you the way, someone who believes in you and someone who has interest in what you're doing and they can invest heavily in what you're doing. So just that. So what I'm doing right now to remain relevant is be the best in my field. So like right now, I'm gonna focus on coaching, be really good at coaching, that when I wake up and someone asks me about coaching, I have all the answers. And whatever I'm giving out is of good quality. I'm not looking for quantity, but quality. And change as many lives as possible. It, there's more to it than just being a coach. You're a friend, you're a mom, and you're a mentor to so many people. You can find me on Instagram at Winnie underscore of her. Or where else can you find me? At Alpha Fed. Yes. I'm always at Alpha Fed from Monday to Saturday. So pop in, say hello. We can have coffee. We have a cafeteria here. We can sit down if you have any questions. Yeah. Oh, Alpha Fit is on Gong Road at Ligindogo, just opposite Marsabit Plaza.